Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. <clears throat> Today I'm going to be looking at a keyboard I am not particularly fond of. And yes, you all saw this coming. This is the Yamaha PSR E313 keyboard. For some reason, I am not particularly a fan of. It's surprising because I used to have a PSR E303, which is exactly the same, except this one has different songs. I'm going to go plug the keyboard in. And by the way, I've not turned on the internal lights because there's sunlight coming in through here. But though, th those of you who are Yamaha aficionados already know what the PSR E313 feels like. Or looks like. What we're going to judge today is how it sounds. So this is the default piano sound, it's on. Now I do like that, but the one thing I don't like about this keyboard are the speakers. They're such low quality for some reason. This is the clean guitar. Now I do like that guitar. Most of these instruments are built into the PSR E413, but the one thing I don't like about it is how better they would have sounded if the speakers were a lot better. I mean, for now, it just doesn't show how great they sound because the speakers are terrible on this thing. Now this keyboard's always been known for having bad speakers. I mean, it's how it was made naturally. So let me just take a look at this. You get 106 styles, now that's not enough for a performer. You can register your own styles, but this keyboard can't connect to modern hardware no more. It can be used as a MIDI controller, but it won't work with the Music Soft Downloader application. I've even tried this and it won't work. But my PSR E413 still does. I'm just going to play you some of the rhythms to give you an idea of how it, this would have sounded if it had some decent speakers. Now this, this, that sounded a lot better on the PSR E303 than it, than it does on this one. Uh, but what gets me is that Yamaha keyboards have not changed um, since this keyboard came out back in 2007. So they were using the same sound chip and the same rhythms, believe it or not. I mean, these rhythms have been on Yamaha keyboards since the PSR 290. And... Um, well, they're the great rhythms of the time. They're out of date now, these rhythms. You do see them on the modern E-series, but uh, there, are more, there are more new rhythms in there, and plus the new, year, the, e, the new E models have a lot more rhythms. I mean, with these ones, this one never brought any new rhythms out at all. They were just the same ones. Even on the, even on the PSR E303, they're pretty much the same rhythms. No changes or anything. Now let's go over to the songs. This is a particularly great song, mainly because, um, I don't know, it's got some expressivity in it, but still not worth it. 
and this song too. I mean, these are the only two songs I even like on this keyboard because they weren't on the PSR E303. But other than that, there's not a lot of life about this instrument. Like I said, it's just a, it's just a basic student instrument for a beginning um, student. And that's why I don't keep it at home with all my other keyboards. I keep it somewhere separate. And that's why I keep it here where I am now. The rest of the songs on this keyboard are just like on the PSR E303. So, no changes at all. The only thing they did change about this keyboard was the button that's to the right of the um, portable grand button is now the music database button. That's the only change they made to it. No changes. And the music database was uh, popular during the times of the PSR 290. Let me just... Let me just repeat myself if you didn't hear that because I forgot this computer's got terrible sound recording patches. Yeah, so this button here is the music database button next to the portable grand button. And worst of all, you can only record two tracks, so this keyboard's definitely not got it all. And um, yeah, so that's that's just a basic um, overview of the PSR E three one three. I'm just clearly not impressed with it one bit. To be honest, there's better keyboards out there than this. So. What do you think about the PSR E313 keyboard? Let me know in the comments, and then we'll discuss about it. And which keyboard aren't you fond of? I mean, I like, I like a lot of Yamaha keyboards, but I must honestly say that this particular one is, well, it just doesn't, it just doesn't um, play out well. It just, um, it just doesn't work right as a performer keyboard. So if you're looking for a great keyboard, well, um, you've got a few options. Um, one, go for a keyboard you know you're going to have fun with. The Yamaha PSR E313, I can definitely tell you now, is not going to be a is not going to be a lifelong companion, especially since it's got poor sound quality. It's just going to be a keyboard that's going to be stored stored away for ages. And two, go for a, a keyboard with most rhythms. Yes, the more rhythms, the better the keyboard is. Preferably, go for one with newer rhythms installed or rhythms that you liked in the past. And number three, um, go for one with that doesn't have so many unnecessary features. Now the PSR E313 has so many unnecessary features that a beginner doesn't need to use, like the function mode. That's not supposed to be on a basically a school-ish keyboard. Like you've got your um, PC mode and stuff. Even MIDI, even MIDI connectivity. I mean. That's meant for advanced keyboards, not for beginner keyboards like the E313. That's meant for keyboards like the PSR220, which was designed for intermediates. So there you have it, why I'm not particularly fond of the PSR E313. Like I said, which keyboard aren't you too fond of, and, and why? And then we'll discuss about it. And this has been Jordan Livesey, bringing you another great video. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. See you later.